Good morning, Amy. How are you this morning? Good morning, Alexis. I am lovely. The sun is shining. Awesome. My animals have gathered around to offer support for the podcast. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm feeling this Taurus, um, moving into Taurus season. Like I'm excited to talk about it. And yeah, like there's so much, there's so much to go into. And I think one of the um, exciting things is we get to kind of touch on, like we're, we're a good amount of ways into the year where we get to kind of go back to um, some of these overall themes that we get to touch on, especially with Uranus. He's a big um, energy of 2021. But when you talk about him at the start, it's like, okay, it's, a, it's this concept. Um, I think we're, we're well enough into it now where we have a little bit more idea of what the year is like and mm -hmm. what we're moving into. So yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're, we're second quarter of the year officially. Spring has sprung in the Northern hemisphere. Fall has autumn. I remember that. It's autumn in the Southern hemisphere. Um, fall is a strictly United States thing. Um, has descended into the Southern hemisphere. And yeah, there's been a big shift in like the next phase of what we're going to do. We've also, we also had the astrological new year take place on the 11th we did. with the Aries new moon. And now it's Taurus season and we're in the earthiness of it. <laughs> yes, we are. So yeah, we had Venus moved into Taurus on the 14th. So we're recording this on the 17th of April. And so Venus is in Taurus currently. Venus moved into Taurus on the 14th. And we will have Mercury in the sun very shortly moving into Taurus. And when the sun moves into Taurus, that's when we officially start Taurus season. Um, and we're in that for the month. So yeah, Venus is there. And so you may have started to feel some of that, like, and Venus is home in Taurus. Taurus is a sign of the senses, the body. Um, it's very much about embodiment and being aware of our, like, surroundings and our connection to the earth. So that is very much Taurus. And there's also a groundedness, like being able to bring things into reality, right? Like, we're not just talking about concepts anymore with Taurus. It's very much about like, okay, and how does this look in real life? Like, what does this look like? And with Venus moving into Taurus, she's home and she is, she's that Venusian. Venus is all about love and luxury and the body and the senses and, you know, like essential oils. And that's Venus. That's the energy of Venus. So she's home in Taurus. So we may have already started to feel um, some of the Taurus energy. I know I have moving in. And that can also trigger some things as well. It can trigger some things around our bodies and you know, some of the resistance we have around um, things in our physical world. So for what that's worth. Um, but yeah, we're probably already feeling a little bit of the Taurus energy. Yeah, Venus is also what we value, mm -hmm. right? It's it's what what and that value moves over and plays with what we enjoy. So the sensuality piece of Venus is our enjoyment. And there's also value. There's connection to the things that we place our energy towards, the things that we place our intention toward, and taking that practicality, um, that Taurus practicality, and bringing almost pleasure to the practical, like finding the, the yumminess of what we're doing. Um, and I don't want to say joy in like that little shallow way. I mean like the deeper joy. Yeah. I was, I was out painting um, my stucco yesterday. And if anybody's ever painted stucco with a paintbrush, it is not a fun job. You got to come at it from every direction and use a lot of paint. And I was outside 
and the weather was beautiful and the birds were singing and people were out walking and biking and the sun was on my back and there was joy in it. I had my music going, my dog was hanging out and there was just a sense of like the grounded holding and really being able to move into the value of being aware of everything that was going on and feeling so held by just being present. Yeah. Like Venus for me, this is a this is an opportunity with Venus and Taurus to really be present with how we're living in our bodies. To be present with the sun and the air moving and you know every i live in minnesota and we've got like stuff coming up on the ground and it's exciting and to bring our senses to being able to experience that yeah. earthiness and yeah. renewal yeah and that we have access to that all the time like it's very loud because we're in here in the northern hemisphere we're in the spring so it's very much that coming alive especially if you're in a place um, that experiences cold winters. So springs are very exciting. Like we love our spring and, and, but the, that energy is accessible to us all the time. But even I was having kind of a rough day the other day, I went for a walk and it was like, I needed the reminders though. I had a, a license plate drove past me and it said bliss. And then a little part, I was walking a little bit further and a little piece of a plaque fell and it had, it said sugar. And I was, I was like in a really, I was just one of those like angsty moods. Like I was just like, you know, going for the walk and all these, but I had this reminder of like, yeah, you can still, those things are true. Like, I'm not going to deny that that's not how I'm, that's how I'm feeling. But these reminders were like, but you can still have the bliss and the sugar and the joy and the whatever you want to call it. Um, as I was walking through and it allowed me, what it did was it allowed me to connect into where I was. Like I could connect into nature. I could be more present in my walk. And it allowed me to actually go deeper into my feelings. And I was able to, I ended up like finding a place in the woods, sitting down and just going into a little bit of a meditation and completely going deeper and clearing. And I left feeling, you know, so much better, but it was both the not denying what I was feeling and that reminder, like, you know, and I did, because I asked for signs all the time. Like I needed those reminders of like, you can still be feeling these things and there can still be a sense of the bliss and the joy that is accessible to you all the time. Cause it's not the escapism of it. Like that was really loud for me. It was just, I was able to be so present with what was happening that I was able to move through it um, in the way that I was, you know, meant to, in the time I was meant to. Um, so yeah. I love that, that. For me is like yeah. the Venus and Taurus reminder of like, it's always, it's always there and we can always be present and we can always be more present mm -hmm. when you brought up the values piece. Um, and that can show up in many different ways, but money may be a very real, right? Cause it's sometimes, you know, with astrology, it's always like, okay, well, sometimes there's these very like, you know, and, and Taurus is about money. Yes. And no, it's, it's, it's about value in general, but it also is, there is a truth to it that money may be coming up because money is one of those just, you know, that's the world we live in that money is a form of value. It's a, you know, way we exchange energy with people and things and homes and whatever. So money may be coming up too. maybe um, our relationship with money or where we can, you know, fall into scarcity mindset or fear and, and things with money can definitely, definitely be coming up. Yeah. There's a lot of dance right now. And the other piece of Taurus is in that presence, just as you spoke into, um, going into, so we can go through, right. Whether it's angstiness or grief, like there, there's so much, you know, grief still going on um, and going into to go through, not to get st stuck, right. but to move into our, the, the chemical and biological process of emotion is about 90 seconds. 
And then as long as we're not using our mental stories to make it longer, we can get the gift of being really deeply present with our feelings, whatever they are. Yeah. And it is a gift. Yeah. And I think that's how we can tell of, are we in the ego or the little mind, or are we in like that soul aligned place of how long um, are we in something for? Cause the ego voice is really loud. Like just because we hear a voice from within does not mean it's soul. <laughs> like, <laughs> the ego is very loud. The ego is very smart. The ego is very, you know, like it can be very, very related sometimes. What was that word you said? It's very survival. Oh yeah. Our ego yeah. wants to survive yes. and it has helped us get to wherever we are in life through its survival techniques. Yes. And not all of those survival techniques have anything to do with soul. Right. Like eating, feeding your body, tending your body, healthy self-care. Right. Those are soul survival. And then there's all the other stuff that is messy and sideways <laughs> and and the ego being like oh well i need to survive this way because it's what i've always done yeah yeah and we so need those the old ego. Ego. you know like we need the ego it's how we function and like we wouldn't be able to you know show up to things on time and work and take care like we need the ego that's our human part of us because the soul really is like I don't care how you get there. Like, it doesn't matter to me. But the point of coming back to that point of like listening, you know, cause we'll say it all the time of like listening to the voice within, but the ego is really loud. So just because you hear something does not mean it's soul. And I think that's the piece of how long do you hold on to things? Like how long are you in it? How long do you spin in it? Most likely it's the ego that's telling you things that's giving you, you know, Kind of information and, and part of it might be helpful right like everything gets us where we need to go but when we can drop into the voice of the soul it's so much simpler it's so simple we can move through it you know and, and sometimes we are we do have processes that are you know a few days or you know we are in cycles we go through longer cycles but i think when we're touching back into that feeling of like moving through the grief or the angst or the frustration whatever it is it's so much simpler with the soul and the messages that we get from the soul are so much simpler. We move through it so much faster. And that was my experience of walking that day when I went walking of, I was in the angsty ego stuff like all day. And it wasn't until I got to that place where I sat down in the woods and I was able to really go into it. It was, and you know, like, you know, when it's coming from soul, like there's a, it touches a piece of you that you're just like, oh, how could I ever forget? Like, oh, there you are. Yes. Right. And we are able to move through it so much faster. So there's definitely a loud piece of like ego and soul right now that <laughs> feels to share. Because um, I think as we move and as we talk about what we're moving into, like we're moving into Uranus getting activated. We'll talk about that more and what that means. But Uranus is the um, great awakener. And as that gets activated, ego is going to start like freaking out. We're moving into eclipse season. We're moving into the second Uranus Saturn square. And we'll go back and talk through what all this means, but because you don't have to know what any of that means. Basically what it means is we're moving into a couple months of intensity. And so the ego is going to get kicked up a lot. And I think that's why maybe this is, you know, coming up here of just, you know, just because you hear something and you, you know, it's coming from within you does not mean it's soul. <laughs> yeah. And for me, a piece of, is it ego or is it soul? My ego wants to know what the end result is, what the long term is. Soul is just like, is this the right next step? And for me, that's, a help in my discernment is when I see that I'm trying to work out all of the pieces and I'm trying to work out every single path and every single option so I can figure out or project what the end is going to be. Yeah. That's ego. Yeah. 
because souls like just take the next step like just yeah. do what is immediately the next right piece right now yeah. and if you do the next right piece right now without trying to figure out what the weather is going to be five years from now or six months from now or next week yeah so my discernment is always like how far out am i projecting <laughs> yes because there's a definite presence with soul like there's a presence of like nothing else around matters other than the now and i mean that can sound really esoteric but it's it's true i think if we can at least strive to get to that place that that is very much this um you know kind of taurus energy of being very present being very in the now and of course we're gonna we're gonna screw up we're gonna like th that's the thing is the ego is always going to be there the ego is always pulling us towards other things um it's just how much can we pull ourselves back to the present so i love that 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 feels like this you know if we're talking about tourist season and these overall themes like this presence how yeah how how often can you get yourself back to the presence because that's going to help that's going to be that's going to be the thing it's going to be big and the recognition that we are human and we're we're embodied divinity like we're soul and there's this container that we we're sitting in and the container is human and our humanity is going to ensure that we are not perfect <laughs> and we're going to make mistakes and how do we own the mistakes how do we take ownership and be like oh i screwed up right there i tried my best it turns out i didn't do my best i'm gonna own that i didn't do my best and I'm going to move forward in a more aware way. I'm going to move forward in a place of valuing the embodiment of both my humanity and my soul. Yeah. That my humanness is going to make mistakes. And that if I can just quiet down and listen to the next best step, mm -hmm. I'll be good to go and loving our human like that's the whole point of us being here is being human like if we were just the soul like we wouldn't have all like right like we, this wouldn't even be anything and so that's the piece though of loving that part like loving the human and that's that's that venus and taurus for me really is like loving that we get to experience touch that we get to experience being here physically that we get to interact with other people and so with that comes all the crap and all the messiness and all the imperfection and it's loving that too because you know would we really want to know the end would we really want to like things to be perfect no we wouldn't we wouldn't because we would just be bored and that would not be a human experience so humans it's loving well what humans don't do well bored we do dumb shit when yeah we're bored. We, yeah we want to keep <laughs> ourselves entertained so we do it in a lot of different ways and it's loving that part it's loving it while keeping right like it's a both it's always both but it's really i think especially with this um, you know venus is definitely kicking us off with a lot of material here of like loving the human that's such a big part of also why i think a lot of you know spiritual and religious you know institutions have denied the human have denied the right like the beauty and the love of being human it's like let's just ignore that because it's messy so we're just gonna like pretend that's not okay and we'll just focus on the soul piece and that obviously doesn't work i mean we've seen how that is a terrible <laughs> terrible thing because when you deny the human that gets even more sideways right it's like when you repress those parts that are innately us our sexuality our you know our expression our creativity our just aliveness when you repress all of that it comes out super super messy and sideways so it's not that um but yeah i love venus and taurus is giving us tons of stuff to talk about and so that's the like kickoff of taurus season and then we officially enter on um 
the 18th, so April 18th, no, I'm sorry, the 19th, April 19th, both Mercury and the sun move into Taurus. So Mercury is the communicator, it's the way we think. So we're, we'll start to be in even more of that Taurus mindset, even more of those Taurus messages will come. And the sun is when that full illumination of Taurus and the Taurus season begins. So that's on the 19th. Um, and just before that on the 18th, so just to give us the Taurus kind of dates and then moving backwards a little bit, on April 18th, we have Mercury conjunct the sun in a superior conjunction, which that means basically it's the midpoint of the Mercury cycle that began in February, February 8th in Aquarius. And so it's the meeting point where um, Mercury is now behind the sun. So it's, it's hidden, but it's in a conjunction, meaning if we were to look up Mercury and the sun would be in alignment. So that is a very, um, yeah, important piece of this as well, that just before the day before he moves into Taurus, so it's gonna be at the last degree of Aries, which also feels like an important piece of wrapping up some of the Aries um, stuff we've been in with some of this angsty, some of this sideways stuff may come up um, as well as the aligned, you know, the passion and the, um, the aligned version of Aries. But there's something about it being at that last degree of Aries too, that the Mercury and the sun meeting up um, there's a, yeah, a big activation there. Yeah. It's, um, how do we, how do we speak our passion? How do we communicate our passion in a bam here? I'm in my center. So it's not the repressed coming out sideways messiness that goes with that angsty feeling, um, that, messy and we're seeing it collectively there's messiness going on in communication things are not clear right now and it doesn't feel like there's going to be a whole bunch of clarity um and we can each like really check ourselves are we being true in communicating our passion are we being true in bringing illumination to how we speak to and communicate our, with ourselves? Like an honesty with ourselves and what it is, like where are we at? Where am I at right now? Yeah, yeah that truth piece feels really loud, especially because around that same time, Mercury is squaring Pluto. And Pluto is about the deeper truths. He is about... Um, he's the God of the underworld and like the depths, right? Like coming to the surface. And so that feels like part of what that will be as well. Um, we're already in that. We're really in that. I mean, that's, um, we're recording that. That's today. It's the 17th. Mercury hits an exact square with Pluto today. Um, and then, so that's the 17th. And then the 18th, Mercury conjuncts the sun. Mercury moves into Taurus. So there's definitely, Mercury is getting activated by Pluto um, and that deep truth and the hidden um, kind of things coming to the surface, then he conjuncts the sun and there's a big activation, a fiery activation there, and then he moves into Taurus. So there's mm -hmm. definitely that truths coming to the surface. The, um, yeah, the idea of with others, right? It can show up with others, but really it can show up with ourselves. Like where are we not maybe being honest with ourselves? Um, yeah it's a thing um there's a song i really love it's called pluto and one of the lines is that the heaviness that i hold in my heart belongs to gravity as pluto is about the transformation of laying down what is no longer true to us and to do that we need to communicate really clearly so that sun illuminating the communication and pluto being like let's get real here it is it is time and just as there the sun and mercury are edging into taurus the practicality of bringing our truth to our day to day like is this can i be honest is this thing i'm holding on to working is this habit, is this thing that I do every day, is there something I can bring into my life? Like is a walk 
in nature every day going to help me with everything that's going on for me because we're maybe not being totally honest with what we need or what we don't need to hold ourselves Mm -hmm. and to nourish ourselves you know Taurus let's nourish it let's bring in the food my little Taurus rising over there my kids a Taurus rising also (laughs) that nourishment (laughs) it matters it does. Yeah. Food, food is important. Um, especially <laughs> for those who have strong Taurus energy, food is like, yeah, food is very, very important. Um, Nourish- nourishment. Right. And so for all of us to feel into that and nourishment can come in ways other than food too. Yeah. Right. Um, but what are the things that nourish us? Like that is a really loud piece, um, of Taurus too, as we move into, you know, more of this Taurus energy of what are the things that nourish us? Like, do that like times 10, right? Like do more of that because, you know, it's funny. Like I'll go for a walk and I'm like, oh yeah, this, I love this. Week. But I don't do it every day. I do it often. I do it like every couple of days, but then I'll, you know, I'll skip a couple of days where I don't. And I'm like, oh yeah, I need to do more. I need to do a lot more of this, like maybe multiple times a day almost. And you know, that probably won't happen. But if I shoot for that, right? Like it's really amping up the nourishment um, of what we need. And to come back to that Mercury sun piece to remember. So when Mercury forms a conjunction with the sun, when they form that exact meeting, it's called Kazemi. And it's basically like when they go exact and there's a clarity for, for a short amount of time, there's a clarity. It's that midpoint of the cycle for this, you know, for this instance, Mercury and the sun, and there's a clarity and there's a peak. Um, there's a knowing that can sometimes happen a message or however you want to look at it. There's, there's some type of, um, activation where things become clear, but on the outside of it, as Mercury and the sun are moving towards this conjunction on either end. So moving towards then moving away, um, it's called combust and it can get a little, um, not, it's not clear. (laughs) It can get a little, um, like, it's like almost like fiery, but not in a good way. Like it's almost, and then it comes to that exact, exact conjunction. And then it's like, oh, okay, here we are. It's like that center point, but on either side, it can be a little messy. So if you felt like, especially around this time, like, you know, this past week, like things are just not, there's just a lot going on up here in the head but it's not really making a ton of sense. Or maybe there's a little bit of sense knowing that this like midpoint cycle, this Mercury conjunct the sun on the 18th, like there's a short period of time where there's clarity and then it will get a little messy again. And then we'll move back into the normal um, flow of Mercury. But just knowing, I think it's helpful sometimes to feel into like the energetics of how Mercury and the sun work. Um, of there's a little bit of confusion, there's a clarity, a little bit more confusion, and then, <laughs> and then we're kind it, of out of it. I see this like, like an explosion. So the center is clean, but there's the fiery turbulence. Yeah. And if we could just have a show of hands of anyone who was angsty at any point in the past week, <laughs> um, that's, that's the turbulence before we come to this clarity point and then there's maybe going to be some turbulence or some angstiness yep and giving yourself space around that yeah um and a lot of compassion and a lot of nurturance and a lot of venus that venusian like it's okay if i take a nap yeah it's okay if i sit down and read a book with some tea like it's okay if I sit and just listen to the birds or take a walk or something that nourishes you to bring you back into center so that even though we're going to be in that turbulence again that we just came out of or move back into it, um, we, can, we can allow it to move us and not react to it we can respond to it rather than react. Yeah. We, we can, it's when you're laying in the ocean and the wave comes and just lifts you up versus fighting it. Yeah. Just nourish. 
sit back. Yeah. And that's important to remember because this, this during this time too, Mercury is squaring Pluto. And so there is a, you know, it's both that not escaping, like going into the depths, like really seeking the truth, but also not like getting, not getting stuck in it and just being in that like dark place the whole time, right? It's the balance of like that example, I think is a great one of how I was angsty, but I spent time in nature. I went out and I was able to move into like a really deep, dense place and move through it. And it's not ignoring it, but it's bringing in the presence and the bliss and the, like, it doesn't have to be hard. Yes, there are going to be hard things that come up, but we don't have to hold on to the struggle of it. Um, so I love that reminder of, yeah, take a nap, T like take a break talk to a friend, have some tea, like do the things that nurture you. And at the same time, like don't ignore the things that are coming up. It's just, it's just holding them in a really loving present way um, that I think is yeah the perfect kind of um, antidote to what we're in right now. Cause we have that, you know, Mercury Pluto piece. We have Venus and Taurus being like, but remember like, <laughs> remember to take care of yourself and like things can still be bliss and sh you know, full of, um, one of the words I'm loving lately is nectar, like the nectar, um, finding the nectar, right? Like we can, we can do that. Um, nectar is my whole plan for like until March from next year, just nectar. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, and so speaking of Venus, as we move into the next piece on, April 22nd, Venus forms a conjunction with Uranus. So now this is the piece towards the end of April. What I'm really feeling is the planets that have moved in. So we had Venus, Mercury, and the sun um, will now be in Taurus at the end of April. They hit and activate the planet Uranus, which is a slow mover. So he's been in Taurus for a couple of years. He will be there for a couple more. He's at 10 degrees of Taurus right now. So he's a very slow mover. So he's there. And as these planets start to move over him, we first have Venus moving over him, then we'll have Mercury and the sun. And it's this activation of Uranus. And so that first piece of Venus activating Uranus on the 22nd is when we'll, we'll have that kind of first hit of the activation because Uranus is a big player for 2021. And if you want to go back and listen to more um, of that, you can listen to our podcast, Into the Unknown of 2021. We talk a lot about Uranus and kind of the overall picture um, of Uranus for 2021, because he's a signature for 2021. He's a great awakener. He's a change maker. He's that electric energy. And so if you want more, you know, we'll talk about him more today, but just if you want a little, if you want even more Uranus, you can listen to that um, podcast, which is episode number three. Um, but we'll start to get some of that activation again, because he's there for such a long time that he's always there, but it's these times when it gets sparked up again that we're like, oh yeah, that's right. Okay. And at different phases of it. So he, um, one of the big, like overarching aspects of 2021 is Saturn and Uranus. So Saturn is very much about bringing things into reality. He's also the old and Uranus is um, the change in the new. So they are squaring each other the whole year of 2021, but they hit an exact beginning of the year first square in February, and they're going to hit their second midpoint square in June. So remembering like we're kind of in that, right? Like we're moving up to this second activation. And I think these three planets, um, Venus, Mercury, and the sun will kind of put us back into that like, oh yeah, okay, right. This is, this is what we're doing. This is um, either insights, information, some change because the Venus, right, may be one flavor of activating Uranus in that she brings the um, embodiment piece, the sensuality, the, you know, what is it we need to, to know about doing on a day-to-day -day basis to bring it in. Mercury will bring another energy, right, of our thoughts and communication, and then the sun will bring a fiery illumination. So there's going to be different flavors, but it feels like that, you know, starting on the 22nd, we'll have Venus first, forming that conjunction with Uranus. Yeah, and this, this awakening piece 
is asking us with Venus, what do we need to awaken, shift, change? Uh, Uranus is is very electric energy. Every time you said Venus and Uranus, I was like, ooh. (laughs) Um, There's an electricity to it. And there's this lightning bolt piece, right? And in Taurus, which can be slow moving and plodding, it's like a bull one step at a time, which is great. One step at a time is all we can do because we're people. And how do we bring something fresh, something new, something awake and the other piece I wanted to speak into that feels a piece of this, these three activating Uranus is, is this square. And it oftentimes for me, squares are about trust and squares are hard aspects. And they're that hard aspect because we as humans can't see around a 90 degree corner. And what it feels like to bring in about trust is our little human selves say ridiculous things like, I can't trust that person. And what that often means is I can't trust that person to do what I want them to do. (laughs) Rather than our little human self saying, I trust that person, meaning I believe that that person is going to consistently be who they've shown me they are. And then there's the bigger trust that it feels like that square piece is the big soul trust is having a relationship with the unknown, which is, it, it, it could, you could call it faith. You could also call it faith and having a relationship with not knowing. That for me is the square energy. We don't know what's coming. We can't see around the corner. And when we can sit back in our trust that we're not trying to control it, we're not trying to micromanage it. And we're back to that, like taking the ego piece out of it. Because a square is the next right step. It's the next, here's what's aligned step. And squares feel hard when we want to project what's going to happen because we're trying to project around a 90 degree angle and that doesn't work. It just doesn't. So there's a trust that's coming up in this awakening, in in what Uranus is bringing in this meeting of the old Saturn and the new Uranus and trusting the bigger thing. And also on this very practical place, trusting that people are going to be exactly who they've shown you they are. It's not that they can't change. We also need to want to change. And in all of my experience working with people, unfortunately, we change when we're uncomfortable enough when it gets uncomfortable and hard and constricted enough, then we change rather than seeking out the change and the growth beforehand, (laughs) before we get sick. We we don't change our eating habits until after we've got heart disease. (laughs) We need to get uncomfortable. We need to get sick. And then we're willing to grow and change. And trusting both the human trust of the really clean, I trust this person to be who they've shown me they are rather than who I want them to be, the the different feel in that, and the big trust of, I don't know what's coming and I don't need to know. I just need to know what's the next right step. And that's going to be a really important reminder as we move into these activations of Uranus um, to be in that place of trust. Like it's going to push our edges of that and right. And coming back to that reminder of, okay, that's what, that was that, that's what we're in. If we can get back to that place of presence um, that will help 
that will help our trust. So those feel like really like keep those in mind as we move forward and to highlight the other dates. So we talked about Venus forms a conjunction with Uranus on the April 22nd. And then on the 24th, Mercury forms the conjunction with Uranus. And then on the 30th, April 30th, Sun conjunct Uranus. So those, and those are all very close. Like it's pretty much like they're different dates, but it's, it's all pretty much in the same little bucket there. <laughs> um, so we're kind of going to be going through it all at the same time, really, although they'll hit different points exactly on those dates. And that whole time, remi remembering they're squaring Saturn. So that is another piece, too, of that activation that we, you know, are in the whole year, but that we started kind of with that um, first activation of that square was February 17th, like there's going to be this, this next piece of the activation. Um, and on the 25th, Venus and Mercury are exactly conjunct squaring Saturn that day. So it's really all happening. Like if you want to feel into the whole thing, it's like Venus, Mercury, and the sun conjunct Uranus, all squaring Saturn. And then if you want to like break it down into the different dates, they form different, like on those different dates, there'll be like these little mini um, points of exact conjunctions and, and activations, but that's pretty much the end of April. Like that's the, um, that end of April kind of vibe. And so I think feeling into everything you brought up around the trust and the presence, like those are going to help us get through that. Cause it feels like there's going to be an intensity <laughs> that week. Yeah. We're in that, we're in the other side of the explosion ring, right? That, that fiery, combust turbulence and can we lay back and trust and float trust riding it and letting it bring to us letting it open letting it show us allowing ourselves to see because it is allowing ourselves to see it's allowing ourselves to hear it's allowing ourselves to trust and remembering that trust is a relationship with the unknown. Big yeah. trust. Yeah. Big trust. We don't and, ask small things here. <laughs> Big trust. No. And another helpful aspect um, may be, well, everything has its helpful and challenge. So <laughs> take that lightly. But it does feel like a... Um, maybe complementary energy of Mars enters Cancer. And Mars in Cancer is not, there's an uncomfortability there because Mars is the warrior. He's the action. Like he likes to be in, you know, his home is Aries. He likes to be in the fire. Um, but it's like the reminder of be in the water, like take a break, take some breathers, like jump in the ocean. Mars in Cancer is a very different, there's a vulnerability too because um, Cancer is about our emotions. And that's not necessarily Mars. Um, he's great at like certain emotions like desire and <laughs> passion. Um, but some of the softer emotions of cancer, not so much. But it does feel like with all this intensity around the activating of Uranus, um, there may be um, a vulnerability with it, but there's a softness that Mars and cancer brings. Um, so that will be an interesting kind of flavor to add in <laughs> to all of that. That happens, um, Mars enters Cancer on April 23rd. So yeah, there's a um, Mars and Cancer, there's almost this delicacy to it. Like the, I, I, I don't know that I have words for it. I can feel the image I'm getting is like Mars taking off his armor. Like, yes. Right. Like Mars taking off the armor and the, there's like, there's a scariness of that. Like I can feel it in my heart of like, yeah. Oh shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> and also that to remove our armoring and how that exposes our desires yeah, like a kind of deeper. The vulnerability of that and what it takes as a warrior, as that warrior energy to, to be vulnerable for me and how I feel it and see it 
is there's a warrior energy to that to to be that vulnerable to be that soft to remove the armor and to to speak our desires to be soft in our passion it doesn't it doesn't make the passion less but to be soft in the way that we're holding it rather than the hardness yeah. of our armory so yeah i think it can be really beautiful <laughs> it's going to be challenging to our little hearts but and the word, to our little hearts the word i'm hearing is like heart warrior like that's oh. that's the thing right like it's going to be a challenge i can i can feel it <laughs> but there is a beauty and there's like, that's the ask, like that's the ask of like, can you do this and take off the armor and get, cause it's, there's like this soft, vulnerable, beautiful piece that you can get to. Like that's, that's the gift in it. Like, yes, like all our little defenses are like, oh no. <laughs> but we know taking off the armor <laughs> and it's, it's one of the biggest gifts that we can offer up to the world is to remove our armor. I, I think about, I know on National Women, Women's Day, there were all of the images of women in dresses and in soft feminineness. I think it's an image of a woman out of Brazil and she's in this dress and the wind is blowing and there's like all of these cops in like full armor and her being there in the softness of her femininity is that's what this Mars in Cancer removing, like just shine your heart yeah. and, and be soft because we need more softness. The world needs us to soften yeah. into bringing our warrior, the, the warrior of the heart. Yeah. the softness and the compassion of cancer. Yeah. yeah. And I can also feel at the same time, because we're moving into this full moon in Scorpio on the 26th. So that's like right there. And we're, we're in it now. Like we had um, the new moon <clears throat> recently, um, new moon in Aries, right? Like I'm already like, <laughs> Where are we? But it was a new moon in Aries, correct? And now yeah. we're moving into full moon in Scorpio um, on the 26th. So we're in that, we're in this building. And to me also, that is, a Scorpio is another water sign. It's, it's a different energy. It's the depths of it though. And I can feel also with that activation of Mercury and Pluto, like that's the, the, the ask, like the, the deeper ask of that Pluto energy is, because Pluto can be a lot of things. And he, he has his own intensity and he is, fierce but there also is a um a ask of like getting to that really deep vulnerable raw place like that's also the ask of pluto is like be your most vulnerable raw self like that's the self i want that's that's the ask and so i feel like all of this like everything we've been talking about is building up to this it's a super moon it's a super full moon in scorpio um, at seven degrees of Scorpio. And it feels like everything is moving us to this also like this. Yeah. The Scorpio full moon, like juicy. <laughs> Magic. And the very next day, cause I'm like, Oh yeah. What, why is Pluto coming in? Pluto goes retrograde on the 27th. So the day after the full moon, and he's going to be in when, when, planet station there's a slowing down so on that full moon Pluto is are going to be in that transitionary point and so Pluto feels like a really loud piece of all of it like he's been there the whole time he's there now he's been there with Mercury um squaring he's going to be there with the full moon so Pluto is like really there and present and it feels like all of these things we've been talking about are like okay and how are we going to get because Pluto is about soul, like the soul. He cares about like the soul's evolution. And so all of it is like, okay, cool. Like, cool. Take a bath, take a walk. That's cool. But how, how are we going to get, and all, right? Like all of it is important and all of it is like everything we've been talking about is all pieces of it. 
but it really feels like this full moon is like, yeah, the biggie. And uh, like, if we go back far enough, Pluto was the God of war just as Mars was. So Pluto can have that warrior energy and that Pluto, I want all of it. it that includes our compassion, soft warrior hearts. All of it. All of it. And I'll, I'll put the Pluto song that I referenced earlier about the heaviness in my heart belongs to gravity. I'll drop that in the show notes. Um, maybe that just use that as your theme song for like, I don't know, next month, the next year. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. <laughs> yeah. And especially as we move yeah, into this full moon in Scorpio and re a reminder, just a little friendly reminder that we're moving into eclipse season that <laughs> we will be talking about that plenty to come. Um, but just to drop it in there, the end of May and right there's, that's the exact date, but there's a buffer of, we're already in it, we're already moving into it. Um, but the end of May, we have a lunar eclipse. So we have four eclipses this year. And just so, you know, friendly reminder, we're moving into, um, we get two eclipses, May and June. So there is an intensity there as well. Um, just to, you know, drop that into everything. If, if, if anything wasn't enough, um, we were joking earlier when we were talking about like the roller coaster and Amy was like, as if we haven't already been on a roller coaster. I was like, I know it feels like we're getting like, on like the next ride. Like we're on, you know, we're always on a roller coaster and it's, we've been in the kind of like moving up. The first drop is when we get this Uranus activation. And then we're just on like a wild ride through the full moon eclipses, like we're just in it. We're on like a two month wild ride. Um, and we haven't been on this ride before. So, yep. Yeah. We, well, we have, well, we're, this year is a light eclipse year. It's only four <laughs> last year. Yeah. Cause 2020 was enough. We got 2020 was a heavy eclipse year. 2020 was a heavy eclipse year. And this is a great opportunity to learn to float. It's a great opportunity to learn to surf. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn to hold yourself to, uh, to your truth, to see yourself and to really check in like, Hey, don't I keep carrying that? Is that weighing me down? Is it, is it a heaviness on my heart that fuck, I don't need that? Yeah. And how do you want to ride the ride? Like, do you want to be like the tight, as I'm like gripping my desk, like the tight, <laughs> like white knuckles, like tight grip, like all tensed up. Or can you get to the place where you like lift your, and it's not easy, like, but it's right. Once you can get to that place of like, oh my God, I'm going to lift my hands up. Like the ecstasy that moves through you. Like <laughs> if you've ever felt that on a ride, putting your hands up, like highly recommend <laughs> can you get to that place like how how do you want to travel through these next two months because you can we can you know we can do it either way we can be like tight tense or we can just and I, it's not a just like of course it takes a like <laughs> a stepping trust up. it takes a big trust to let go unknown but that Relationship way with unknown. yeah <laughs> but that way is way more fun so I and like, Amy, you can remind me of this as I'm like, you know, tight knuckling my way through the next two months of like, you can take the fun route. You can take the hands up in the air route. Like you can go that way. Oh yeah. I'm going to need that reminder. Um, mm -hmm. because we do, we have choice in how we travel through. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So throw your hands in the air. Um, I'm going to drop in that Alexis has a beautiful new program that you can check out on her website, which will be in the show notes. Um, I have a women's retreat coming up in person in August. Um, once again, check out the website to either website. We'll, I'll drop the Atlas Pluto song in the show notes. And until next time, this was amazing. This was, yeah. And thanks for bringing that in because it feels like um, that program I have coming up, which is the, it's on the new moon in Taurus. Like it pulls in 
some dark feminine masculine, like I can feel Pluto there. So it, it definitely ties into um, what we've been talking about. So yes, if there's any interest there, check it out. Thank you for mentioning that. And yeah, there's going to be, we're going to have a lot to talk about in the next <laughs> few podcasts. So stay tuned. There will be, uh, yeah, can't wait for what, uh, you know, we decide to dive into next. Absolutely. Drop us five stars, leave us a review. And until next time.